going to take you back through our projected winners so far. Governor J.B. Pritzker, projected winner for a second term in office here in Illinois against Darren Bailey and Libertarian Scott Schluter. Another race already being projected for uh, Senator Tammy Duckworth. She will be returning for another six-year term to the Senate. Those are our two projections, and you look at the numbers as they stand right now. But again, Tammy Duckworth has been projected as the winner in that Senate race tonight. Now let's bring in our political analyst, Pat Brady, and of course, Kimberly Goen. So, all right, if we start with you, Pat, so you, you heard a lot of what we were talking about in terms of the balance and power at the national level. It, given what we've seen so far, very slim reporting, uh, what are you thinking is going to happen with some of the key races here? In Illinois? Yes. Well, I tell you what they call that governor. That's the quickest call I've ever seen. I was going to answer. I barely got my mic on there. Right. Calling it. So that's not a good indicator. I don't know how AP does it, but that's not a good indicator how the rest of the races may go. But I still think that there is an outside chance that some of these congressional races in the suburbs could go Republican way. The Supreme Court races are be, will be interesting. It'll be interesting to see if we can pick up some in, in the Illinois House. We've got a long way to go, but that's not a great development called that quickly. You said earlier last week, I think, that you had the over-under at 10 for the I, I had 7-6. Oh, well, well, you yeah. took the under. I took the under, um, yeah. um, which this is, this, is, this is super early. Does, is this an indication that it might be bigger than that? Well, you know, sometimes I'm not pretending to be an expert on, uh, you know, the stats of it, but when they come out to these, like, two-for-ones, they kind of tend to stay that way. So it may not be a great night. I always thought that Darren Bailey would overperform expectations, but maybe he doesn't. Yeah, right. really a shock to you at all? I mean, I know that you had were, had some very strong views about Darren Bailey and even the ad campaign that came about yeah. in the last few weeks of this, but uh, did you think that it would be closer? Um, no, uh, maybe a little bit closer. The one thing that I will say, I thought that the governor, I thought, I said 10 percent, so I thought that the governor would pull it Which off. Which is a huge win. Yeah, and, yeah. and anything less than that is actually an embarrassing win, mm -hmm. considering the amount of money that he has put into, although he did pay a lot for Darren Bailey's campaign, too, but, you know, the amount of mm -hmm. money that he has put into the campaign and the idea that this is someone who's talking about having presidential ambitions, but then you don't win by at least 10 percent, then that is, it, it'll be interesting if that happens. But there have been some cracks that have been shown, even with the big win. And I think that you, you did, Eric, I thought you were really right on point to ask uh, Senator Durbin about, you know, Robin Kelly, the Illinois Democratic Party, mm -hmm. that move, and what did that mean? I think that there's still more to that. There's more there there. And maybe we can talk about it a little bit later. Well, but, let's yeah. talk about it now a little oh, bit because sure. it seems like you, you told us earlier, yeah. weeks ago, that you thought he was going to run. Definitely, right? I mean, you said, I think he's going to run based on what you said and where he's been in New Hampshire and elsewhere. Yeah. Do you think he's a viable national candidate? I think that right now, if you're looking at just the generic uh, lists of people that are being thought of, he is not top. We in Illinois looked to him during COVID-19, so we knew what he was capable of doing as far as in, in um, an emergency. But when you, you look at the larger list, he's not top. But I'm hearing, this is what I'm hearing, that maybe even a vice presidential slot. Mm. Mm. Maybe that's even more of what he's going for. In the last few days of the election, we saw ads come back referencing uh, Governor Pritzker's comments that were caught on tape oh, yeah. when he was talking with someone, say, in a derogatory fashion about a lot of the African-American leaders here. To get him on a national stage, do you see there being any red flags that could be holding him back? Yeah, I think that that never goes away. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anyone waits until the week before the election to pull that out. We, we, everyone was wondering, when is this coming out? Um, so that, that never goes away, but also just the interactions what happened with that Illinois Democratic Party? <laughs> that that still that's fresh. That just happened, mm. and I think that there could be different implications. I think that there needs to be some fence mending. Let's say it that way. Okay. Well, before we move on to Chewy, because that was an interesting development today, Pat. Let me ask you about how this all went down on the Republican side for governor. I mean, this was a mess. You had. Ken Griffin spending, what was it, $50 million yeah, on Richard between, Irvin? Yeah, Mike Zonarovich, this consultant, got a hold of Griffin, convinced him that Richard Irvin was the guy, didn't really talk to anybody, uh, spent $56 million, got cream, got third place. Dick Uline, another billionaire, put another $60 million in, and it looks like he's going to get cream too. So we're $130 million into this race, and they never flipped a seat. So if this goes like this the rest of the night for the Republicans, I really question the viability of the party going forward. Really? Just, I mean, you can't. If, 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 if 
uh, Darren Bailey gets 57% of the vote in a five way primary and gets beaten, they declare him a winner at 701, literally 701, then that we're not putting up candidates that can win. And it's not, Governor Edgar is going to be on later, and we mm -hmm. can talk about it with him, but we're not Alabama. We're Illinois. We're a, we're a, a blue state. We got to put up candidates. We can get a Republican governor. We had 25 straight years of Republican governors. That, and they were the Jim Edgar types, the right. Jim Thompson types, even the George Ryan types for all his wards. Jim Ryan would have been a great governor, but for Rod Bogoyevich. So we can do it, but we can't do it under this model and the experiment of the far right of the party putting up a candidate and, and keeping him there. It doesn't work. I've been saying that for 10 years. It doesn't work. Now we have proof positive, $130 million in you know, he, he, he loses immediately. That's horrible. Well, that's who Republicans voted, though. That's, that's what my 57%. Point. That, percent. That's, my that's who they wanted. That, you know what? Maybe it's time for a third party. Hmm. All right. Well, let's turn to Chewy Garcia now because that was the breaking news. And I know we were hearing rumblings of this before, but now, Kimberly, that it's supposedly official coming Thursday, the announcement. What do you think that means for the mayor's race, particularly where Lori Lightfoot's head might be right now? This will be, I think it just got a, a very interesting. Let's mm -hmm. just say that because it, it, even, you know, with the mayor having this completely divided vote, being someone who said that she was, um, she was definitely um, forward and she was, she was gonna be, you know, progressive and all of that. But then you have a Chewy Garcia who really is a progressive mm -hmm. in all of his movements. Then you've got a Brandon Johnson who really is a progressive right. in all of those right. movements. I, it's gonna be. Okay, so we are going to go to a, a national update at this point. So we just wanna pause here on our stream. Stay with us though, you'll get a behind the scenes look as we give you uh, more information on where we stand in the election.